I was going to talk a little bit about the new aircraft carrier that we oh. have. Um, the that expensive thing. The, it's like two point three billion dollars and shoots million dollar missiles. No, it's more than that. It's thirteen billion dollars. Oh, thank you. It the the two point five. That makes me feel better. The two point five billion. That was the R and D cost for the line of carriers. Ah, my um, mistake. Yes, and this is the uh, the one that just was released is the USS Gerald R R Ford. Um, it is our eleventh aircraft carrier. Doesn't the whole rest of the world combined have eight? <laughs> Hang on. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So we also were, it's not really going to be active duty until 2018. Uh, yeah. But then in 2020, we have another one that's going to be christened and out. And then I think USS Gilead, two more. Yeah. Well, grumble, grumble. Now it'll be another president. Um, but these are, uh, these are big bastards, okay? These are bigger than the Nimitz. They do not work on steam. They have bigger reactors so that they can have bigger energy weapons. <laughs> They're actually going to be implementing rail guns on these guys. Uh, they can launch bigger airplanes, uh, more careful in the way they launch things off their deck. Bigger deck, smaller tower, all sorts of interesting things. From a technological standpoint, whoa, cool. I mean, really. These yeah. are amazing things. Um, do we yeah, need it? No. Floating city. We, we don't really need it at all. And it takes, mm -hmm. uh, it takes almost 20 years to build and then get it out there. And then it will have another service life of about 20 years. Sometimes longer. Depending. Uh, we haven't had a new aircraft carrier line in quite some time. So really, the Nimitz is an aging fleet. And a, this can just be attributed to the slowly we need to get those out of service and bring in a new line. I can see that. If we were simply going to have more and more and more and never, ever sunset some of the other ones, then I'd have a real problem with it. Mm -hmm. Uh but some interesting things. We have, uh, this makes the 11th aircraft carrier. We will eventually have a couple more. Um, we have 31 amphibious ships, 23 cruisers, 62 destroyers, 8 frigates, 54 tactical submarines. Those are the ones that attack other submarines. Mm -hmm. And 14 strategic missile submarines. Boomers. The boomers, yes. Uh that's a lot. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's a lot of Navy. Um, Navy is actually the largest manned service that we have at 512,000 standing military, or sitting in some cases. Um, Air Force is at 316, almost 317,000. Army is 475,000. Uh, we have a lot of tanks. Why do we have tanks? We have 2,831 tanks. But we don't really fight ground wars very much anymore. No, um, because conventional warfare has gone the way of the dodo. Yeah. But you know what we do have an awful lot of? Ground attack aircraft fighters. 2,537 airframes for that. Air superiority is a thing, and air support is more than a thing. Well, air superiority, the air-to-air, -air, we have 422 of those birds. <laughs> We got a lot. Uh, there are other numbers, but they're irrelevant. Now, if we go to a country that is ostensibly our enemy, North Korea. I don't know if that's a good comparison. There's some surprising things some, here. There's some, some Lego some, ships and some Hot Wheels. There are some surprising things here, okay? Okay. Um, Sorry. They have a million-man army. Mm-hmm. One million, twenty thousand in the army. Okay. They have 110 in the air, 110,000 in the air force. Not 110 men in the air force. <laughs> that, that would be that'd be amusing. Um, they do have 60,000 60, in their navy. Did you were you even aware that North Korea had a navy? Yes. Okay. Well, I figured they would. There's some interesting numbers there uh, as well. They do have a lot of air-to-air -air combat uh, aircraft. 401, for instance. Uh, 
the others, they're all under 100. Uh, they have 3,500 tanks. I guess we can put our tanks against their tanks if we needed to. Great. And then they've got uh, a lot of short-range missiles, but not really anything. They have two frigates. But two frigates is not really enough to support 60,000 Navy personnel. No. They've got tactical submarines. Would you care to guess how many tactical submarines North Korea owns? To give you, the, you know, to go back, we have 54. The United States has 54 tactical submarines. 25? Higher. Oh, my God, I'm surprised. Amber? Mm, 37. Higher. 50? Higher. 60. Higher. 84. Too high. 75. Real close. 73. They have 73 submarine attack vessels. <laughs> but what condition are they in? That's a great question. And does it involve an upside-down life raft? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but those are the numbers. It's just, it's like that scene from Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one, where Jack and Will are underneath the overturned boat and are like walking on the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, it's this is a tactical. <laughs> is that a, that's a tactical summary? That's funny. Um, I don't know that that's the case. <laughs> I really don't. Um, South Korea has uh, 23 tactical submarines and a lot other a lot more ships and everything but you know they're widely supported guns and ships mm -hmm. guns and ships um, Japan has 19 tactical submarines 33 okay. destroyers lots of artillery ground forces it's interesting why they even do that but well part of that is having a, a self-defense force yes. That's what they were allowed to have. Um, Which, artillery, it's not going to go off the island. Now, something in something interesting that they have. They don't have traditional aircraft carriers, but they do have three helicopter carriers. So Japan's got that on everyone else, because they're just doing something different. Maybe that's for the kaiju monsters, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Now, China... Um, Something comparable to the U.S. They have uh, a million man army again. Yeah. Um, Not they have population their despair. Population. Yeah. Right. But given that North Korea has a similar army. Yeah, but consider the context for why. Yeah. It's conscripted service. You know, that's what you have to have to be. Especially if you want to do things like eat. You know, that's, <laughs> Especially if you want to live. Yeah, that, that's kind of important. That's the business. It's the family business. Um, absurd numbers of ground forces, lots of aircraft, 150 bombers, 843 air-to-air -air aircraft, 642 fighters. That's the ground attack variety. And just 380 purely ground attack bombers. Those would be like uh, the gunships, essentially. So, they've got a lot of aircraft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fighting China would be difficult. <laughs> we, would yes. have, we would have to be very decisive in what we did. Uh, they do have an aircraft carrier. They're building another one. Mm -hmm. And that's probably to replace the one that's really not so good. Mm -hmm. It's not a good aircraft carrier at all, from all reports. Mm -hmm. They do have 53 frigate, frigates and 53 tactical submarines and four boomers. So it's interesting just to see what what they invest in. Mm -hmm. Our technology is probably better, but from sheer numbers, our generals have some issues at hand. we got to be way better than them. But that's if we're going to attack all of them at once, which apparently, yeah. if I remember properly, um, that was actually the goal of the military for most of the 80s through 90s and 2000s, was oh, to be 80s. able to attack all of them at once and still win. Mm -hmm. 
it's an interesting game that they play. Um, but from a sheer technological standpoint, uh, the new carriers are pretty cool. <laughs> they're yeah. very, they're very big, very, very fancy. This. Yeah, we made a floating city. Well, we have eleven of them now. Eleven floating cities, folks, because yeah. these things have their own special postcode. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. Also, learn something else with strange art. You're breaking up there. You you paused again. Hmm. So what Thus did you learn? The nature of Skype. Uh, strange things doing research for RPGs. Um, there is the United States Postal Service uh, Investigation Service. There is. Yes. Yes. Do you know they're international? This does any not place, surprise me because they would have place, to ship all over the world. Yeah, any place that the United States Postal Service ships to, there is a division in the USPIS. Hmm. Um, they are the oldest investigative service and police force in our nation's history because they existed before the nation did. Mm-hmm. Pony Express. I feel like I saw this on an episode of something, but I can't remember what... Oh, yeah. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine? They report mm-hmm. to the Postmaster General, which reports directly to the President. Mm-hmm. Shh! They, don't tell him! <laughs> um, <laughs> he probably doesn't postal know. Infantry. The they, Postal Investigation Service. Yeah, they have their own wall... In the history of their service, they have lost 14 people. I have so many questions. I do have a lot of questions, too. Only 14. Yeah. I wonder what they were doing at the time. Um, I mean, I just feel like 14 is a lot. I don't know. Postal investigative service. Well, for the, for the entire length of for time. For the nation. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just like, what were you mixed up in? Like, what was that's this the question? Conspiracy. Well, that's the you, question. What What, what did you get stakes? into? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: they handle anything that involves the mail. Mm-hmm. So all forms of mail fraud. Yeah. Um. Also, the transportation of contraband and or poisonous or nuclear devices. Okay, seeing that, yeah, yeah. They also have a joint task force that is a specific division. So anything that is tangentially involving the mail, they have groups to help other agencies. In fact, they busted up a specific one that had the highest number of RICO statutes involved, if I remember correctly. Racketeering, okay. And was the, uh, I think, still holds the record for most charges brought to a single individual. It involved a specific okay. NASA case. NASA? Yes. NASA was involved. Was somebody trying to tran- transport and sell moon rocks or something? Because uh, I know that's no. illegal. They, they Probably were tra- documents. Like they research were trying documents. to, uh, it was a, a corporation that was um, getting funds from NASA and using it for nefarious means. Nefa- building a death ray. Nefarious means from NASA. Well, that's not even nefarious anymore. That We're just going to put that on the next aircraft carrier. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that was just like one of the things that you, you can find out. Um, huh. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine-Nine did an episode about um, drug dealers leaving drugs in like the the big mailboxes, you know, like the ones that are out on the sidewalks and yeah, stuff the that like blue boxes, walk by. Yeah. yeah, and uh, they had to deal with the the USPIS, and they had like a whole di- like just different methodologies and stuff like that. And it, it was it was very much played for laughs, obviously, but it was also very interesting. I would not play these people for laughs. I saw their standard armament. That was actually quite terrifying. Really? They did talk about that a little bit. They shared yes. that a little bit. 
MP5 <laughs> operator challenge coin for the USPIS. Um, they they again, so SMGs and shotguns are typical armament for the USPIS. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to find out more, you can go to USPIS.gov. They do have their own They'll website. You. Well, hopefully they won't. <laughs> Mission, Chief Postal Inspector, Don't History, Fallen Officers, Jurisdiction and Laws, Forensic Laboratory Services. I'm going to be on that Fallen Officers page later. I'm just... This is going to be... Yeah. You know. That's a rapid hole. I'm going to fall down. I'm going to pitch myself into it. Uh, yeah, it's like... What, this... The, the most recent one was Preston B. Parnell, postal investigator in Birmingham, Alabama. He died in 2012. Of what? It does How? Not say, does not say. No. Um, no. This is the important bit. Yeah, does not say. Well, um, any violent crime involving a postal worker is involved with USPIS. Yeah. But, yeah. But in the line of duty. Succumbed to injuries sustained in an automobile accident on Highway 43 near Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Okay, that's less in the line of serve. I mean, I'm sure you can construe it that way. He was probably on the job at the time. Yeah. Could so. have been on the call. They have their own pursuit vehicles. They have mobile command centers. In my head, what a job this must be! I mean, the really, the, the, the reasons are so much more stupendous. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, in memoriam behind the badge, Smithsonian National Museum, Robert F. Jones, postal inspector. There's one in a in a museum. This guy. Okay, now it's getting interesting and totally, <laughs> total. I blame you. You should. I blame you. Interesting. Behind the badge, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service at the Smithsonian National Postal Museum. First of all... There's one of those. Second, (laughs) there's a dude in it who died defending our nation's mail. Part of their mission is to ensure the public trust in the mail. I'm not saying it's not a serious um, issue. I trust it them. Obviously, is I trust them more now. <laughs> yeah, like I feel secure when I get my shitty junk mail, Ooh, and it has case it histories. has been delivered with the utmost attention and care and security. Case histories, scams and schemes, dangerous mail, thefts, robberies and burglaries, assaults and murders. Yep. I'm intrigued, and I, I think that that at the crime scene. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. This this is definitely cause for uh, further reading, and really, I think that that probably ought to wrap us up. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Have fun with that lore hole, lore hole, folks. Yeah, this is that's an interesting one. Interesting I'm one. I'm gonna write a book. I swear to God. Please do. It's gonna be a whole series. It's gonna be a thriller. Like spy style series no, about that, the USPIS. No, I, I, I just, I want you to, 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 because they, they, they do have partners. I just want a team, a team. And, yeah, I think this is where you get like the Warehouse Thirteen staff. You, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Again, you can actually find the different vehicles. That these people have. Look up the mobile command center. It's a hoot. I'm gonna write the next born identity, but with mail. This is good. I like they're this. The old, again, they're the oldest law enforcement agency in the United States, and they report directly to the Postmaster General, who reports directly to the President. No, I'm legitimately fascinated. I'm just an <laughs> asshole. And- <laughs> If you've enjoyed what we've done here, 
and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways you can do that. You can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash O'Reilly Radio. That's patreon.com O'Reilly Radio. And get early access to show content when life allows me to do such things for you. Uh, also, make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes or wherever you happen to find us. That'll help boost our ranking so that it gets in front of more eyeballs, which will then boost our ranking further. And, and then, you know, we're actually talking to more people than just ourselves. And use your words. Tell somebody about us. That's really the best, best of all. And then have them come back and, and say hi, because we, we like that. And, you know, like engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias, the electronic mails not governed by the USPIS <clears throat> at O'Reilly Radio Podcast at gmail.com or if you're the more talkative sort 470-222-O-R-L-Y that's 6759 it's always ready to take your call or your text and if you don't like what we've done here this evening you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 available 24 hours a day 7 days a week the Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgia, created by Kevin McLeod of Ecomptech.com. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. And uh, go... Uh, go fall into a uh, an interesting hole there and, and research the United States Postal Investigation Service. Oh, there's also a really other cool one that involves, you know, the... the yes, the Finance Department. The Treasury? The Secret yeah. Service? Because they're it, part of the Treasury. No, it's not the Secret Service. These people f investigate financial crimes. They're an even secreter service. Ooh. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's save that for next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Government agencies that you didn't know existed. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of them. That was actually the one of the things I was... an agency, no matter how small. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I don't know how many of them are armed with MP5s. Probably more than we'd like to really think about, honestly. That 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 is unsettling. Yeah, that's a uh, little unsettling, a little bit. <laughs>